So when Beth asked me this question, do antidepressants work? I was like, what? Of course they work. How else would they be approved by the FDA? And then she was like, but if they work, why is there so many depressed people? And why do so many people still commit suicide? And then I thought, good question. Despite the fact that effective treatment for depression is widely available, untreated depression is the number one cause for suicide in the United States. Depression is the cause of over two thirds of the 30,000 reported suicides in the US each year. And to get an idea of how serious this problem is, that's three suicides for every homicide. Scary, huh? A study by the National Alliance for the Mentally Ill found that two thirds of all people with a mental illness don't get treatment and refuse to go on antidepressants. And that's partly because of the stigma of mental illness, but partly because the average person has a deep mistrust of antidepressant medication. Antidepressants are bad. I need to be able to think creatively for my job, and the meds would numb my brain. They're overprescribed. They'll make me feel worse. I don't trust pharmaceutical companies. And it's easy to see where some of these misconceptions might come from. For other drugs, like antibiotics, the relationship is pretty simple. Get sick, get meds, get better. And it's super rare for straightforward antibiotics to have any complications. Often we can actually test for exactly which bacteria you have and give you treatment that will completely cure you in a couple of weeks. But antidepressants are different. First of all, you're trying to rewire the brain and restore brain chemistry, something that's extremely complicated to do. Neuroscience, the study of the brain, is still one of the youngest sciences and medical science doesn't really fully understand the underlying circuitry of the brain or how it works. What we do know about the brain is that it's really dauntingly complex. Each individual brain has a careful balance of chemicals that affect your mood. Plus, doctors have to to choose a medication for you based mostly on a verbal self-reported description. Imagine if infection was the same. It's about an inch long, it's pink or red, it hurts or itches, maybe both. Ooh, that sounds like quite a laceration. Um, can you tell me, is there any pus? Yeah, there's definitely some pus. Could you describe the pus for me? Would you say that the pus is more of a runny nose pus? Or in your opinion, would you say it's more of a cottage cheese pus? Uh, you get the idea. It can be pretty difficult to diagnose exactly what's wrong when all we have is this description of how we feel. And yes, while medical science does have those fancy MRI machines that you see sometimes in medical dramas, it doesn't help at all for treating or diagnosing depression. Plus, unlike antibiotics, you can't just take antidepressants and be okay. It might be better in a couple of days or the treatments might take months to get right. Or you might need other sort of therapies at the same time. Prescribing the right medication at the right level can be a total trial and error process. There are side effects which can range from low blood pressure, nausea, to suicidal ideation which kind of goes against the whole point of antidepressants. Bad reactions are one of the reasons why people go off their meds rather than sticking with it and finding a dose that works. Plus those suspicions about the corrupt pharmaceutical industry are based on some truth. The Open Payments online database shows half a million payments were made to physicians totaling 3.5 billion in just a six month period. What were the pharmaceutical industry paying these doctors for? Well, sometimes it's speaking fees and sometimes it's attendance at conferences, but a lot of the time we don't know. The thing is, whether or not doctors overprescribe antidepressants to the people who don't necessarily need them doesn't change the fact that they do actually work for sufferers of depression. The mere fact that a drug has been approved by the FDA shows that it's passed rigorous testing, meaning that it has to be both safe and effective. The FDA has strict rules, linked in the description about the kind of science it looks at and there's a whole organization the center for drug evaluation and research that just makes sure that the data that's coming from drug trials is accurate and that all drugs are safe and effective for their intended use according to the national institute of health 80 percent of people treated for depression show an improvement in their general symptoms after four to six weeks now i should note that with this data the definition of treatment includes not only medication but also psychotherapy and attending support groups or a combination of those, but this is some of the best data that we have available. And for the people who don't improve on medication, around 50% of unsuccessful treatments for depression are from medical non-compliance. Basically, people stop taking them. Perhaps one of the real reasons why we don't take antidepressants when we're depressed is because of the stigma around depression. A study last year revealed that two thirds of people would hide a mental illness from their friends and family. There's still this feeling that unless you have some like 
postulating an infection that's clearly visible. You're not really sick and therefore you're weak or you must be faking and that you shouldn't have to put a drug in your body just to function in society. Everyone's experience of mental illness is unique. Beck and I both have loved ones who suffered from depression or who have been suicidal and these are just a few of the stories among millions. Major depressive disorder affects approximately 14.8 million American adults or 6% of the adult population. That's a huge disease burden. If you suffer from a mental illness particularly depression or anxiety, the reality is that medication has a good chance of improving your life. Everyone can help break the stigma of mental illness. And I know that changing the world is something that we psychiatrists want to do. That's why you're fans of this channel. And one thing that we can do to make the world a better place for people suffering from mental illness is to take the NAMI pledge to be stigma free. Beck and I took the pledge and it's a good reminder of how we can work together to promote acceptance and challenge stereotypes. So what do you guys think? Do you have any experience with antidepressants for yourself or for someone you know? Did they work for you? We'd love you guys to be generous in sharing your stories because opening up the dialogue about depression is one of the first steps that we can take to make the world hashtag stigma free. So leave your comments in the comment section below. Hi everyone, I'm Jade Lovell, resident science nerd on the Young Turks Network. You're watching PsyQ and we know you don't want to miss an episode, so please click the subscribe button down below.